you're going to have beautiful hand advantage, card advantage the entire Ooh. game. Oh my god, the first printing of a snake death touching token. Oh, we got to get it. By the end of MTG, it's probably going to be the most printed card ever, seeing as they put it in every single commander deck that comes out. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We are going to talk about our very first Is It Worth It? What's the Value Product of the Year with Commander Collection Black. While we're going through the video, if you would, think about hitting that like button if you like the video. It helps the video get out to other people. It's a great way to help out the channel. Another good way is to look in the description of the video and click that Patreon link. There are a lot of benefits and it might be a good fit for you. And like we said earlier, stick around to the end of the video. We're gonna compare this product to Commander Collection Green and see which of these products have better footing, which ones are better for EDH players in general. Let's take a look at what we've got. So Jake, I wanna start with the snake token for two reasons. We are going to go in order from least valuable card to most valuable card that is included in the set. Sounds I also good. want to start with the snake token because this was like where the conversation was when this first was announced. People were like, oh my God, the first printing of a snake death touching token. Oh, we got to get it. And we got this it. Is like, it. We got it. Here it is, everybody. It's look at that cute little cross-eyed snake. I think it's very adorable. It's a $3 card as we preview it on TCG player. All the prices that I say today are going to be TCG pre-order prices. And we're going to compare that to a version that you could just pick up. But Jake, it starts with the $3 snake token. Yeah, some purples and yellows here. This might be an Ekans. And then the other side is a zombie, a 2-2. This is going to go with the Liliana Heretical Healer, I believe. And yeah, a little bit of a flavor win here. It's kind of cool. I think it's a Ghoul Color Gissa is what this goes with. No, I think it's the Lily. Is it the Lily? I might be wrong. <laughs> Tell we us down do in the description below <laughs> what is this zombie token? This, to this token goes with. Let's get into the cards that actually have some value, Jake. Command yes. Tower. Look, Command Tower, it's been printed into the ground at this point. 50 cent card. This one's pre ordering for three bucks. In comparison, though, the Commander Collection Green, which, like this one, has the art that is specific to the Commander Collection of whatever color. The Commander Collection Green one is four bucks. So I would expect this Commander Collection Black one to be about the same amount of value. Yeah, and it is notable that all of the art that you're going to see in this video is new art specific to Commander Collection Black. Um, yeah, the Soul Ring, the Command Tower, they leave a little bit to be desired. Could we have had maybe full art there? That could have been good. Oh, that's talk such about, a good idea. Yeah, Ghoul Caller Gissa here. Uh, two black, three other for a three, four. Now, this card is right around seven to eight dollars, if I if I recall correctly. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty specific card. It's very good. It was originally printed in a Commander product, and then it was also printed in Jumpstart. And we know how difficult it was to find in Jumpstart being a mythic as well. But for one black and tap, sack another creature, create X, two, two black zombie creature tokens. Okay, so this does use the token where X is the sacrifice creature's power. Uh, yeah, I think the card is good, but it's going to thrive most in a deck that utilizes sacrifice. Not saying it's not bad to be able to uh, sacrifice a creature in response to a removal spell and get some right. value out of it. It's it's a very good card. Ghoul Caller for me plays super well in a zombie deck. It plays uh, super well, obviously, in any kind of sacrifice focused strategy, but it's just generically good in black. This is the kind of card that would start on the 99 for me in a deck that had black and maybe one other color, and then it would probably work its way off unless it was directly related to the synergies. Eight bucks pre-order for the Commander Collection Black version of it. This is normally a ten or eleven dollar card, so decent value, but not as widely playable as a card, say like Reanimate. Putting a creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control for just one black mana. This is the kind of Commander card that I want to see in these Commander collections. This is a ten dollar card pre-ordering with this Nils Ham uh, art, new art for Reanimate here. Re regularly reanimates a 12 or 13 dollar card so some good value on a good card here yeah in cedh being able to pay life 
for a big cost, being able to just grab something that you need, it's not, it's not a huge ask. Use your life, burn yourself down, whatever it takes to win. Reanimate is one of these very good cards. It's been a powerhouse ever since it was printed. The yeah, I really like. Very strong. I really like that one in this set. Next up, we have Soul Ring, and Soul Ring is just Soul Ring. By the end of MTG, it's probably going to be the most printed card ever, seeing as they put it in every single commander deck that comes out. And like I said earlier, if we had maybe seen an extended art version, then that would have been something very exciting. Maybe put an yeah. extended art non-foil in the non-foil version, extended art foil in the premium version, and now we're talking, like, yeah. big value there. Our level of excitement for just another Soul Ring that's not extended art, that's not full art, does not really line up with the pre-order price on this one right now. This is a hype card for some people, and I think it's just from the customization aspect. People, for their black decks, want a Soul Ring that is, you know, black-themed art, and I think that that is a very cool place to customize. I think that's why the Command Tower is going to have any value at all. Pre-order price on this version of the Soul Ring from this collection is $11. The collection green Soul Ring ended up settling around the $9 mark, so you know that there's going to be some value in this if you do want to pick up this collection, but you're not interested in the Soul Ring you're going to be able to get at least 10 to $15 back immediately just by flipping that piece out of it. Jake, next up is Liliana Heretical Healer. And at the bottom, we were both right. It creates a 2-2 black zombie it creature does. token. I'm wondering if the art on the token is her brother from the lore, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Let us know in the comments. Liliana Heretical Healer is a fine inclusion. It's normally about an $18 card. You know, it flips into a walker if a creature dies while it's out. Pre-order price on this one is 14 bucks. I do love this piece in particular. This is one of my favorite Liliana pieces I think I've ever seen. So for that reason, I am into this card. But again, it's the kind of card that... It's not widely, widely generically playable enough to me to be in a collection like this. It's a little bit focused. It's a little bit more niche than you would expect cards like these to be in a collection like this. But it's still a good inclusion. Almost a $20 bill for a regular copy. Pre-ordering for $14, but that probably goes up over time, right? Yeah, and I've seen prices, you know, as low as like, you know, 10 to $12 on eBay and stuff like that for the yeah. other copy. But again, this is exclusive art to this uh, product. Now, Ophiomancer, this is a very strong card, a CEDH playable, uh, important card for sacrifice types uh, strategies. I've seen it in uh, Yawgmoth lists. It'll pop up in other type of food chain type lists. Because this card is each upkeep... Uh, you're able to get the most out of this if you do have a sacrifice outlet use it at the beginning of each player's upkeep you're getting another snake it is sitting at around a 14 to 18 dollars uh, that i saw when i was looking at ebay prices and tcg prices earlier so the card is very strong and again it's probably going to have a little bit of a price hike because of that art yeah it had only ever been printed in commander 2013 before this but it's only about a 17 dollar card for the other version the original version pre-ordering right now for 14 like you said i think that this is going to be desirable especially because it does come with the cute little snake token as well and so That's you can right. kind of have them you know you only ever need the one snake so this is a nice little pairing to be in a set like this and it really doesn't offend me that that one is in there at all frixian arena is still a widely played card it's done a lot of work for me before. It's been a crappy late game top deck for me before, but this art looks super dope. I'm a big fan of this art on here. Arena is still like a 15 or $16 card, which is kind of surprising because it's not the most like game breaking play it and you win kind of effect, but it does speak to its desirability overall. Jake, this version right now is pre-ordering for 14 bucks. Yep. $14 card. Uh, I like Phyrexian Arena. I'm typically playing in pods that are like medium power level, and I think the card does really well there. If you slam a turn two Phyrexian Arena, for example, you're going to have beautiful hand advantage, card advantage the entire Oof. game. Yes. You know, players are going to target your Phyrexian Arena if they have enchantment removal. It's not the kind of card that just sits there and it doesn't bother players. It's very good. Is it top tier competitive no there's other stuff that you can play like you said is it a terrible top deck late game 
Sure. But yeah, I think the card is good. I think it's fine. I think that for most players, they're going to be happy with the Phyrexian Arena. It yeah. does make up some good value here. Makes sense for this to be in Commander Collection Black. I'm hugely in favor of it being there. Jake, is that shouldered in the art? I'm just sort of noticing it as I'm sitting here staring at it. I'm wondering if that is a take on Shouldred there lording over the Phyrexian Arena. Let me know in the comments if that's who that is or if you know who that Possibly. art is. Yeah, I think it could be pretty cool if that is the Queen of Death herself. Speaking of death, Jake, Toxic Deluge. This is yeah. the best card in this entire collection, right? Well, 100%. This is a premier board wipe. You know, most bo uh, board wipes, the best ones, Wrath of God, uh, Damnation... They cost four. Then you get into board wipes that are pretty good that cost five. This board wipe costs three. You have to pay life in order to get the most out of it, but it's a flexible, versatile spell. And um, that minus X minus X is even better than destroy. It's just a straight up board wipe that's fantastic. There's really not a lot to complain about here. Uh, obviously, if you put it into a deck that is fine with life loss you're gonna like it that much more you know if you're able to exsanguinate get a bunch of life cast you know you could do minus 20 minus 20 clear anything up right anything possible even it's, stuff uh, that's indestructible it's widely yeah. played in cedh because it's only got one color pip in the cmc of it and jake i mean it's like you said earlier in a game of cdh life totals are not the way really that anybody wins getting everybody to zero and so you can minus 39, minus 39 if you want to wipe literally anything that could possibly be on the board creature wise, still be at one and still win the game. So, yeah. And another thing to say about CEDH is the curve is so low that a lot of the creatures in the format are, are low to the ground. Right. They have low toughnesses. So you're able to just clear pretty much anything without even that much life lost anyway. Right. Yeah. Like if you can get over Urza's toughness, you're probably good, right? <laughs> I mean, pretty much some lists are running like six toughness creatures and stuff, but those are going to be like green lists. This is uh, this is going to clear pretty much anything and everything. And that mana value being three is a big deal. This is definitely the card that gets us the most excited in the entire collection. This is a $22 pre-order card for this version of it with the green acid rain. $25 card regularly. So this is absolutely where a lot of the value in this set is coming from. Overall, with this set, before we compare and contrast it to Commander Collection Green, you've got about $99 to $102 worth of value for the pre-order prices, like I said, off TCG Player that I pulled when we were making this video. And the cost right now, I'm seeing it online for about 75 bucks for the regular version, maybe a little bit higher as we get closer to it. The release, I mean, and then $150 for the premium all foil version, which if you're lucky, won't be Pringles. Yeah, if you're lucky, it won't be Pringles. So uh, yeah, I think that if you're getting it for $75, you plan on playing with these cards, you don't have a lot of these cards, then I think it's a good product to pick up. Uh, I think it is worth noting that some of the less notable cards in this product will probably see a correction in price. You know, a lot of the Commander Collection green cards that came out as like $10 cards corrected down to that 4 to $5 range, some of right. the less notables. So Deluge will probably stay propped up. Again, this product is a little bit different from Commander Collection Green as far as the spread on value. For me, if I could find this sealed for like 60 or $65, I would probably just snap by it right then. At 75, it's a fine purchase for me. Any higher than that, I'm not really interested because higher than that, I'm probably just gonna snipe singles like Jake said. As people get these, they're gonna take the cards out they want and they're gonna put the ones that they don't want up on the secondary market. And so that's going to be a great time to snipe up some of the singles like Ophiomancer and the Snake Token, like the Soul Ring, like Toxic Deluge or the cool art on Reanimate. That's probably how I'll end up engaging with this, Jake, is buying some singles later. I want to take a brief moment and compare this product to Commander Collection Green. There's a couple big differences. So in Commander Collection Black, we have the Ghoul Caller, we have Phyrexian Arena, we have Reanimate. We also have the Toxic Deluge. Our value is spread across different cards. We have more cards that are a $15 to $20 range, whereas in Commander Collection Green, we have Bane of Progress, Fraley's, Omnath, Seedborn Muse that are all $10 or less, right. okay? But the big difference between, and we're not even going to talk about the, the Command Tower or the Soul Ring. We don't really sure. need to do it. 
But the big difference here is the Worldly Tutor and the Sylvan Library. Now, Sylvan Library is a 40 to $43 card near Mint. That's Love just it. like a big powerhouse piece, CEDH playable piece. And right. then the other card that really stands out is that Worldly Tutor. Instant Speed being able to tutor up any creature, put it at the top of your deck EOT, that's another big CEDH playable card. Now when a card is CEDH playable, that means that you can slot it into pretty much any power level and it's going to be just generically good. You can kind of like build around it if it has a strategy. But like even the Seedborn, Omnath, Freelies, and Bane of Progress, just generically strong good cards. So we were just talking about in Commander Collection Black, it kind of feels like we have some more cards that are more niche. We have a couple cards that are really good, like Deluge is really good, right? They're specific to certain strategies is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, absolutely. I think both of us have a preference toward Commander Collection Green's approach to these, where there's one or two really powerhouse, valuable cards, excellent reprint target kind of things. And then the rest can just be whatever, as long as they aim, you know, generically good for that color it does seem like there's a little bit of niche cards in the commander collection black and it doesn't really just have that like one powerhouse hit that wow you know? factor right exactly like deluge is cool phyrixian arena is cool there's some really cool cards in it but like seeing that sylvan library in commander collection green you're like whoa we're getting a new art sylvan library right now and right. then that worldly tutor I don't know how a Commander Collection Black was made that didn't have a tutor in it. Let us know down below if you're going to be picking up Commander Collection Black and let us know what you would have put in the collection if you had been in charge of designing it. Yeah, we've talked a lot about Commander Collection Black. We've compared it a little bit to Commander Collection Green. Curious to hear your thoughts on that as well. Which product do you think shines brighter in the long run? Let us know. Until next time, we'll see you next time that was my jake impression that was good <laughs> <laughs>